Now, if you have followed this channel, you know that I'm optimistic about gold prices. That's why I have this previous video. Is it time to be buying into gold? Just in case you haven't checked it out, I'll leave links below. But the main story today is Warren Buffett. And he has actually bought, you know, in some way or another into gold. He's actually bought a gold mining company. Let me pull this up for you to see over here. And this gold mining company is none other than Barrick Gold. Who is Barrick Gold, you may be asking. Barrick Gold is the number two producer in terms of gold in the world. Second only to Newmont. And very interestingly, this is a major change in terms of his stance on gold. Warren Buffett has nothing good to say about gold previously. And let me pull up this quote which he has given in Harvard in 1998. He mentions, gold is something that's being ducked up in Africa, melted down, people are paid to stand around it, guarding it, and there's no utility. Anybody watching this on Mars would be scratching their head. Very interesting. It shows that gold really has no functional use other than being a storage of wealth. But he's gotten something wrong in their speech. Uh, let me pull this up for you to see. Africa is nowhere in the top list of countries producing gold. The number one which will surprise you is China, producing 399.7 tons of gold. Second is Australia, third is Russia. The first, no first name of Africa in that list is South Africa and they are number eight only. So really gold doesn't come too much from Africa. So the next part of you know, today's discussion is, you know, gold prices have climbed quite a bit. Gold mining company share price have climbed quite a bit. At this point of juncture, Barrick Gold is actually at its three year peak in terms of share price, as I can show you over here. So Warren Buffett is not really buying, you know, into a distressed company. He's buying into some momentum and something that he's seeing gives him the conviction that, you know, Barrick Gold has still a lot of room to go upwards. If not, he wouldn't be buying. And share with you a bit, Barry Gold is actually a big cap company, 50 billion worth to be exact. And today we'll be discussing a few key points. You know, what Warren Buffett is exactly seeing in this current market climate. Secondly, I'll be showing you how to evaluate a gold mining company from a very simplistic point of view to understand its cost structure and revenue structure. And thirdly, I'll give you exactly how I'll recommend you to be invested in the gold. So with that, let me run the intro video. Hi guys, welcome back. Now let's start with this discussion, what Warren Buffett may be seeing in the gold market actually. So if we look at this chart over here, this actually shows the climb in terms of gold price over US dollar and what has happened this year, they've actually increased by 25.9%. This is the gain as of 2020 as of this time of filming. So pretty good gain. And what I can show you further in this article, something very interesting. Let me pull this up for you to see. Gold price versus real interest rates. You know, we always say that gold is you know, a hedge against inflation. But this article actually argues that in terms of deflation, gold is actually an outperformer. They've highlighted in 1970s, 1980s, as well as the late 2000s, gold actually did fantastic because of deflationary pressure. And if you believe this pandemic is going to cause deflation for years to come, gold might actually shoot up based on this argument. And a further interesting chart to understand where does, where does this bull market in gold actually, how much legs more do it, does it have? This chart actually shows a little bit of information. While it seems that this current bull market for gold has been persisting for about 52 months, what we can see in this cumulative gain is this gain is not that much as compared to previous bull legs. Previous legs have easily gained three or five times in terms of price appreciation, but right now we only see a one-time gain in terms of gold price. So does that mean that in this bull leg, there's still a lot more room to grow? That's anybody's guess. And now let's look in terms of gold mining companies, what kind of financial numbers are coming up? Because that's something that Warren Buffett is definitely a specialist in. The first to look at is Newmont, because Newmont is the biggest gold mining company, correct? So Newmont, let me pull this up for you to see. Operating cash flow, $2.866 billion. This is the best across five years. If you look across there, this means that in 2019, it produced so much operating cash flow. In 2019, the average gold price was about 1,003 to 1,006. In 2020, now we are seeing about $2,000 per ounce. So this operating cash flow, it should be, you know, 2020 should be even a higher number than this. So what about Barrick Gold, which Warren Buffett has bought? You also see record operating cash flow across five years. So again, it's not only Newmont, the big two players are showing record numbers. Maybe that's a good indication. Let's look at number three player, Anglo Gold Asante Limited. Now, Anglo Gold, a bit, a bit different. 2019 was a good year, but if you look across five years, it's not the best across five years. But nonetheless, 2019 is still a good performing year for Anglo Gold Asante Limited. Could that be due to operational performance? I don't know. 
but it goes to show overall in the industry everybody is showing better numbers and moving forward 2020 could really be a record year this chart that i'm about to show you is comparing gold against silver in terms of prices as well as gold mining stocks let me pull this up for you to see the gray line is silver price and silver price is just such a volatile thing that's why if you want to buy into you know, uh, precious metals go with gold it's a lot less volatile gold is the yellow line over there and the blue line you see at the bottom there's actually a gold mining stock what does this 10 year chart actually tell you it actually shows that you know, if you buy into gold mining stocks it actually, actually underperform the gold price itself because especially in the years from 2011 to 2016 gold price declined a little bit but gold mining stocks actually lost severe amounts but what's the interesting part if you squeeze on for five year performance this chart actually shows you our performance is coming in gold mining stocks in the blue line now are the top performers in this last five year gold mining stocks have increased quietly in my opinion gold has appreciated that has gotten all the headlines but gold mining stocks the outperformance is a lot as, a, as you can see right now when you squeeze to a five-year time frame so that's a great insight maybe Warren Buffett has spotted that and this outperformance could come in looking forward also so if that, that gives a big picture overview what is the favorable long-term trend for gold itself and next segment I'll touch on how to examine a gold mining business and that drills into details into profits and losses as well as some of the costs they incur now in this segment I'll share with you how to evaluate a gold mining company you know, just imagine this, you are boss of a gold mining plant itself. What do you see when you look out the window? You see all your excavators, all your trucks running around, all your plants having a lot of electricity so you can work 24 hours a, a day and you have a lot of your manpower bringing shovels all over the place. And this exactly is what is happening on the mine itself. These are costs that we can appreciate. And let me pull this up for you to see. This summary actually shows you a few key parts. The first, direct mining costs. As what I've mentioned, you have a lot of your labor costs, correct? You have a lot of your electricity costs and a lot of your fuel costs. So these are direct mining costs. And thankfully for gold mine, fuel prices are at all time low, which means you know they are not spending so much in electricity and fuel. The next part that I've boxed up in green is actually in depreciation. Now, as I've mentioned, in a plant, you not only have your factory like thing with a lot of conveyor belts, you also have your heavy machinery experiencing wear and tear. And that's where exactly is depreciation. Gold mining companies are very asset heavy companies. They have a lot of machines and vehicles and that's why depreciation is always a big charge. The third part over there surprising is royalty expense. I actually want to do some curious investigation. And what I realized is royalty expense is actually a, an expense that you no know, gold mining firm pays to the landlord itself because this province owner, for example, owns this land and this land is found to have gold. So what does this province owner do is they actually have a profit sharing with a gold mining firm. You mine the gold and anything you produce, I, I take a profit sharing through this royalty expense. And what I'm trying to say is, as the production of gold increases, this royalty expense will also increase. So if you're gold mining, you, if you, you own land that has gold inside, fantastic. You're sitting on a gold mine. That's, that's how the saying actually goes. So I have also interesting statistics to show you to help you understand a bit better on gold mining firms. I've put in this picture a comparison between Barrick Gold as well as CNMC. CNMC is a small mining company listed in Singapore. And what I'm trying to illustrate to you over here is if you compare the cost between a big player and a small player, how does it look like? Barrick Gold's all-in sustaining cost in 2019 was 825 US dollar per ounce, correct? And if you compare that to a small mining firm like CNMC, they actually clocked a 983 US dollar cost. So what does, that, what does that suggest to you? That a big firm actually has certain economies of scale and a big firm is actually being very diversified. They can be mining in very low, low labor cost countries, cheaper than in Malaysia, for example. And these countries actually don't have a lot of cost to produce the gold that they want. And when they sell on international stage, the price is the same, but their costing is lower, which means they have more profit than a small player itself. So that's something interesting to take note of. And just in case you want to evaluate what other gold mining companies are listed in Singapore, this is actually a very good summary. CNMC is one of the biggest names. Their production is only 28,137 ounces. And that's actually very little if you compare to Barrick Gold. Barrick Gold actually produces 140.8 tons. So again, it's a behemoth and a small player. 
The other names like Anchor Resources, Wilton Resources, Lion Go Corp are already small cap companies, which I think there are a lot of risk in terms of how they operate you know, consistently. And beyond that, I have a few key parts that I would like to highlight to you. In, a, in terms of a gold mining firm, there are a few risks that can be lawsuit risks, for example. You mine against uh, certain regulations and you get fines. Other, other risks such as labor issues, because uh, if your workers uh, have a union, for example, and you run into labor issues, that could be cost to you. And, and as we have seen in this COVID-19, there were a lot of lockdowns in many countries, which means labor could not be deployed into the mines itself, which means loss of income. That's what happened exactly to CNMC. That's why they clocked a loss for the first quarter of 2020. Then there's also other risks such as fire, such as natural disaster. There are also other risks such as poor operations. So what I'm trying to illustrate to you is from afar, we, we, we think we may be able to evaluate a company quite easily. But what happens on the ground? What kind of risks their company actually faces? There are multiple risks. So there are easier ways to get invested. And that's what I'm going to address in the next section. If you have benefited, smash on like so more people can see valuable content like this. And again, inviting you to smash on subscribe, join our family and become more financially savvy. Now, as I promised to you, it's much, much more risky to buy a particular mining company. Why not buy diversified? Why not buy an ETF? whereby you can get many, many mining companies in one go. And that idea can be found in Van Eck Vectors Gold Mining ETF. Let me pull this up for you to see over here. This ETF is one of the biggest gold mining ETFs in the market. And surprisingly, they're very concentrated. What I can see on the left, number of holdings is only 53, which means usually ETFs, they have you know, hundreds and hundreds of names. But this ETF is very focused. They only have 53 number of holdings. And if you look to the right, what I boxed up for you is actually Barrick Gold Corp is 12.05% of allocations, which means if you want to piggyback on the Warren Buffett's idea, this is pretty good. It gets you that and it diversifies for you to 52 other gold mining companies just in case Barrick Gold doesn't do too well. So it's best of both worlds. You buy this um, gold mining ETF, it gets you the exposure to this gold mining sector. And if you're curious to find out its performance, this is a year-to-day chart, uh, chart, fantastic returns. It's about 39.7% as of this time of filming. This beats you know, investing in gold against US dollar per ounce. And this you know, is, is a reflection of the, the bullishness in the gold mining sector itself. And surprisingly, I was actually looking, do unit trust funds actually per, outperform you know, the ETF, the gold mining ETF as of this moment? Because gold mining ETF annual management charge is only 0.5%. Unit trust charge is 2% on the annual management, but surprisingly, if we look at this year to date, there are many, many funds that are outperforming more than 40% year to date returns. This is surprising. I haven't had time to look exactly why is it so. My gut feeling is because unit trust funds can actually pick, you know, a smaller, smaller gold mining, junior mining companies. And maybe that sector is really outperforming, you know, big cap mining companies as of this moment. That's why year to date, they're all doing like 40 plus, 50 plus percent return and that is that is very interesting so to end things off i have two names that i've added to private clients portfolios for small allocation and maybe you can check down on yourself they are blackrock world gold fund and they're also united gold and general fund these two funds are four star rated in morningstar and pretty good an option so i'll actually do some deep diving into this sector for gold mining funds and if you're interested smash or subscribe so you'll get notified when it's released so with that i'll sign off hopefully i've answered a lot of your questions and if there are still burning questions on gold mining sector leave them in the comment sections i'll try to address each and every one of them with that i'll sign off i'll see you in the future video take care and goodbye